You're watching ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Welcome to Los Angeles. Tonight, for the 80th time in this series, it's the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame against the fifth-ranked Trojans of USC. And these teams have already set the tone in pregame warm-ups about 40 minutes ago. As Notre Dame took the field, we had this confrontation. A little pushing, a little shoving. That led to a couple of right crosses before officials and coaches could break it up. Holly Rowe has more. Well, when this thing started, all the players from all areas of the field that were warming up sprinted to get into the action. Guys, there were punches thrown, a lot of physical confrontation as well as verbal. But I spoke with the referee, and he said there would be no ramifications. He said it was guys just letting some hot air out, just play ball. I also saw, though, some of the members of the USC support staff and Coach Charlie Weiss of Notre Dame. There were a lot of verbal confrontations. As Coach Weiss walked away, he said, you didn't believe me. I told you there was some fight left in us. All right, Holly, thanks very much. Mike Patrick, Todd Blackledge, great to have you with us tonight from the L.A. Coliseum. What did you think of a little dust up down there? Well, I don't think Notre Dame gets any points on the scoreboard for it to start the game, but I do like the energy that it showed. And the one thing Charlie told me right after it happened, he said, I guarantee you one thing, we will not back down in this game. And he said something very interesting. He said, the last couple years we played these guys, I think we lost the game before it started. Well, they need to take a step forward tonight, and that's a good way to get it going. They've been playing this series since 1926, and Notre Dame has never been a 32-point underdog. They are tonight, and that helps fuel the rumors about the future of Charlie Weiss at Notre Dame. Well, there was a lot of noise in the system early in the week, particularly. I think most of that was the result of a very dreadful home loss to Syracuse last week where they had a big lead going into the fourth quarter. I think it's quieted down some. I don't think there's going to be a coaching change made at Notre Dame. And I think also the best thing that can happen for Charlie Weiss is for his young quarterback, Jimmy Clausen, on a return to California to play well. Now, one of the problems with Jimmy Clausen, he's got a great arm, so he thinks he can make any throw. This game a couple weeks ago against Boston College, he sees the two deep safeties. He knows where the openings are, and he wants to get his slot receiver down the middle. But the thing that he has to be aware of is who's rushing and who's dropping in the underneath coverage. In this particular play, Lawson went back to throw, and Mike McLaughlin, the middle linebacker for Boston College, is going to do a great job of dropping underneath the pass route, which forces Clawson to throw the ball high. The ball sailed over his receiver's head. It was intercepted by Boston College, ultimately returned for a touchdown. On the road this year, Jimmy Clawson has struggled. Four touchdown passes, 11 interceptions. For Notre Dame to have a chance, he must reverse that trend tonight. For Southern California, with all the teams above them winning their chances for a national title, are probably going but they're still in line for a big BCS bowl bid. And they probably have more talent than anybody in the country, especially on defense. You look at that side of the ball, they may have five first-round draft choices out of 11 guys. Yeah, they're outstanding. I'm really excited to watch them live. And when you watch them on tape, you can see they play with passion and energy. They love to play together. And look at these defensive ranks. First in the country in scoring defense, pass defense. Second in total defense. And what makes it even worse for Notre Dame tonight this is senior night, the last home game for seniors here in the Coliseum. Seven of those defensive starters are senior for USC. This is an outstanding defense that has carried the football team all year. Well, you're just full of good news for Notre Dame. Kickoff from the L.A. Memorial Coliseum is next. in the mood, doesn't it? Now here's our Sonic Rivalry recap. The 80th meeting that started in 1926 in this series. Notre Dame with the overall lead, but USC has won the last six. And they thumped the Irish 38-0 last year. The worst Notre Dame loss in this series. Beautiful L.A. Coliseum just 
history personified at this venue. Coming up on our show tonight, we'll put our resident Heisman voter on the spot. Who are the finalists as we come to the final week of the season? And also, before he graced the silver screen, John Wayne starred on a different stage. Find out more when we play Did You Know and Taste of the Town Heads West. Todd sinks his teeth into the history of the French dip sandwich. And not only do we get food, we <laughs> learn something. A full service. If you were Pete Carroll, you'd be smiling too. 85 victories in 100 games as the head coach of the Trojans. 85 and 15. And Charlie Weiss, who right now must feel like he is at the opposite end of the spectrum. The last two years have not gone nearly as well as his first two. Beeler will kick off. Armando Allen, a very dangerous return man, along with Golden Tate, number 23, are deep for the Irish. USC won the toss, deferred to the second half. Beeler, one of the best kickoff men in the country. 39 touchbacks out of 69 kicks. And blast this one eight yards deep into the end zone. Notre Dame will start from the 20, and who are the impact players we're looking for, Todd? Well, it starts with their sophomore quarterback, Jimmy Clausen, who played at Oaks Christian High School here in California. He's got to get off to a good start. He's got a great arm, can make every throw. The guy he'll look to the most is wide receiver Golden Tate. Golden Tate had a couple of touchdown passes last week against Syracuse, and on defense, the leader is Maurice Crum, their leading tackler, a very physical inside linebacker. Charlie Weiss said earlier in the week to us, we're not going to have many 12-play drives against these guys. We've got to hit opportunities when we can. They go out in the flat. Golden Tate drilled as he got to the 27-yard line. Really stuck by Mayaba. Lineups at the top of your screen. And as Todd already pointed out, there are some big, mean guys playing on this defense. Well, this linebacker core in particular, all three seniors, Mayava, who made that tackle, Mawaluga, who's in the middle, number 58, and Brian Cushing on the outside. Three seniors, three outstanding players, all will be playing on Sundays after this year. Armando Allen is the single setback for the Irish. He'll get the toss. Nowhere to go. Yeah, I think it's going to be very important for Notre Dame to have some semblance of a running game. I mean, if you want to pick one thing that was the biggest problem last week against Syracuse is the fact that they only ran the ball for 48 yards. And on this defense they're playing tonight, way better than the one that yeah. they played at home last week. This is not Syracuse. No, they've got to have some balance to take some pressure off of Jimmy Clausen. Mayav has been on the first two tackles. He said, I've been complaining for three years about not getting a chance to play when you can't be all mouth sometimes you got to get out there when you have your opportunity and show them how good you can be third down for Clawson USC comes with a four-man rush they drop seven Clawson with the deep throw and he's picked off Kerry Harris had beautiful inside position and a poor throw by Clawson standing with Pete Carroll during pregame warm-ups and Notre Dame was just throwing deep balls and he looked at me and he said that's what they like to do they like to just try to throw deep he's got two guys over there in coverage and Kerry Harris probably the best cover guy out there just read it perfectly he was in position and he read the ball and he made a good play on the ball and the three safety maze was there to help if it wasn't there and odd that they would throw it to Grimes because their yeah. speed guy is Tate Michael Foy the other speed guy is hurt and not playing tonight so USC gets the early turnover CJ Gable on the toss makes a move and picks up about three Mark Sanchez the junior quarterback out of Mission Viejo leads the Pac-10 in total offense and look at the touchdown to interception ratio 26 to 7 he follows guys like Carson Palmer Matt Liner John David Booty that's a great lineage to come in behind isn't it and, and that TD to interception ratio is spectacular for a first time starter and this is his 13th start tonight oh there's a pick well read Notre Dame returns the favor Robert Blanton playing for the 
Drops the pick. It was intended for Turner. Well, Lambert does a great, or Bland does a great job of reading the quarterback. Watch him turn in and just cut right underneath the route of the intended receiver, Patrick Turner. That's a true freshman making a smarter play than the senior wide receiver, Turner. He read the slant, he read the three-step drop, and stepped right into the throwing lane to return the favor for the Notre Dame defense. How about that for making the most of that yeah. opportunity? So now Mark Sanchez gets a little schooling on the sideline. And a big break for Notre Dame. Good field position at the 42. Blitz coming. Lawson runs away with it from it. Throws to the sideline incomplete. Lawson much improved over a year ago. A lot of that has to do with the people around him are so much better. But 20 touchdowns and now 16 interceptions. He's still in the middle of the pack nationally as far as quarterback efficiency, as far as a lot of things, but obviously he has gotten better. Charlie Rice says he can't force things anymore. That's what has gotten him in trouble. Allen. A couple of nice cuts midfield, about a yard and a half shy of a first down. This guy's got talent now. Armando Allen and the defensive coaches for USC are very aware of him. Nice job bouncing that to the outside, stretching the play, and getting very close to the first down. Third and very manageable yardage for Notre Dame. Clay Matthews took an odd angle on that play from the defensive end spot. Just came straight down the line. Wasn't even anywhere near the ball carrier. They mark it back at the 50, so it's third and two. Now, now check it. It's the big guy, Aldridge, comes in, and Aldridge can't move the pile at all. Tupo was in there. Cushing was in there. And Notre Dame will have to punt away. Lost. To kick to Stephon Johnson, who waits back at the 10. Johnson averaging a crisp ten and a half yards in return, but might not get much of a shot at this one. Runs up on it, makes the catch beyond the 20. Two-yard return on a kick of only 31 yards. Nothing, nothing. First quarter in L.A. Injured Notre Dame player is Mike Anello, who is this year's version of Rudy for Notre Dame and they are going to bring out the cart and it looks like they have been applying an air cast to his right knee and here's how uh, he was injured on special teams very tough to tell where he was hit well, he's their leading tackler on special teams 22 tackles he's gonna make one right here again he fights off the block gets the tackle on Johnson and somewhere in the in the mix there he gets the injury yeah, looks like his own guy caught him. Canelo getting a Steve really nice win. Really nice round of applause as he gets up. Young men who walked on. Uh, you mentioned Rudy because he's just a little guy, 5'10, 170 pounds, and has fought and fought and fought. Got a scholarship. And. Our Levi's 501 original feature earned a scholarship during the fall. Had his first career block punt against Navy. And, you know, when you're a walk-on and you're 5'10", 170, and you lead special teams yeah. and tackles, I mean, most special team guys now, you know, 215 pounds, 6'2". You got a little toughness, a little grit to you oh. if you're doing that. And that's our spotlight on tonight's Levi's 501 original. And we certainly wish him all the best. Be interesting to see now how Mark Sanchez responds. One of the things about him, he's very hard on himself when he makes mistakes. Great preparation guy. McKnight, who has blinding speed, trying to get to the outside, fights for extra yardage. Picks up maybe five. 
Just talking about Sanchez. Uh, Steve Sar Sarkeesian, his quarterback coach, offensive coordinator, said, you know, he's a guy who really works hard, prepares. He's in my office late at night during the week studying. And when he makes a mistake, it's almost like he can't believe it because he's prepared for everything. And uh, early in the season, had a little trouble getting over that and, and moving to the next play. That's been one of the real things that, that Sarkeesian has worked with him this year, moving on to the next series, the next play. Stephon Johnson is in the tailback because Southern California will rotate those guys. Complete pass to Patrick Turner, and he's got the first down. As a quarterback, I mean, you want to learn from your mistakes. Like you said, you can't dwell on it. it it's got to be that kind of defensive back mentality. That's right. It's got to be the same thing. You got to be able to just kind of learn from it, you know, figure out what you did wrong, if there was anything you did wrong. Sometimes the guy just makes a good play, you know, or a ball gets tipped in the air, and then you got to move on. You got to let it go and move to the next possession because you got 10 other guys in the huddle counting on you to move on. Take it to McKnight. Flip it out to Damian Williams, the transfer from Arkansas. And here's for the first time tonight, Reese Davis. Reese. Well, Oregon State's best rusher out of the game tonight. Jackson down to the 43. That raises the question, would it be better for USC to win the Pac-10 and go to the Rose Bowl or get a that large BCS bid and maybe play someone ranked higher than they are with a chance to move up? Well, at that point, if you're not playing in a championship game, I mean, I, I don't know that it matters that much, you know, but... Uh, Take a look at the Pac-10 standings. Oregon State, again, uh, one of the real stories this year in college football. I mean, if they uh, if they can find a way to win at home tonight, they will be the, the Pac-10 representative in the Rose Bowl to face Penn State. First down for Sanchez. And around Ronald Johnson, another guy with terrific speed. Breaks one tackle, but goes down back near midfield. That's quite an effort. Blanton just would not give up. You gotta love guys who don't chase plays and stay home. Yep. Well, and you have to do that with this offense because they uh, they run a lot of bootlegs with Mark Sanchez. He's very mobile, getting out of the pocket, moving either left or right. They fake reverses a lot with their wide receivers, so you really have to be disciplined on all kind of misdirection stuff with this USC offense. Gable is back in. Dancing. Picks up maybe a yard. Virtually everybody in the backfield for USC is a parade, a USA Today, a Gatorade All-American. I mean, five-star recruits, every single one of them. Nobody else seems to be able to stockpile talent the way they do. Well, Pete Carroll's philosophy is it's all about competition. And you win or lose playing time or starting jobs in practice uh, early in the week. And... And I thought he said something interesting. When they recruit, they recruit guys that don't look at the depth chart. They recruit guys that want to come in and compete to play, and they don't care who's here or who's not here. Sanchez. Damian Williams, their leading receiver. The sophomore who had to sit out a year after he and Mitch Mustaine transferred here from Arkansas to gain the 24. Damian Williams is so smooth. He does a great job of waiting to the last minute and then going up for the football. And at that point, Blanton, who was in good position, had no chance to play. He didn't know where the ball was. Damian went up and caught it high, and Blanton had no chance. Nice ball by Mark Chance Sanchez, giving Williams a chance to make the play. Well, he did wait until the last yeah. second, didn't he? Tight end move. Brett Ellison, number 40. All start on the offense. Number 40. Five yard penalty. First down. Jerry McGinn and his crew out of the Big East. You see so many defensive backs who are not looking at the ball. They wait for the receiver to go up, then they try to get their arm in between his hands. He waited so long, there was no chance for Blanton to do that. Yeah, he, he is really, uh, really fit in well in this USC offense. He's a very smooth receiver and uh, has just blossomed here in the last year. He has been staying during the summer nearly every weekend at the home of Mark Sanchez. 
This one's complete down to the 14th. Patrick Turner on a perfect strike. And here's Holland. Well, you saw the nice pass from Sanchez to Williams. That's one way to feed him. But Mark Sanchez did something even more impressive. He had about 20 or 30 of his teammates over to his house. Damon Williams said he couldn't wait to get down there and eat some good grub. Mark said his aunties did a great job preparing everything. He's like, wow, we walked in the door and, and we got it to eat pretty quick. <laughs> Didn't we all on Thanksgiving? Second and six for USC. Scoreless game. Maybe three yards from McKnight. Mark Sanchez, the junior, his first year as a starter out of uh, Mission Viejo, California. Brother Nick played football at Yale, and he comes certainly from an athletic background. He's a 2004 Parade All-American High School Player of the Year. Mitch Mustaine was also the National High School Player of the Year, who was the quarterback right behind him on the depth chart. Sanchez, good protection. Turner inside the five, and he's picked up and dumped. Well, but asked, it will be first and goal. I asked the question, how would Sanchez respond after the interception? <laughs> five for five on this present drive, and does a nice job. He's got a six-foot-five, 220-pound receiver out there in Turner. He's going to throw it to the back shoulder. It's a stop fade. Very difficult to defend if you throw it right, particularly if your receiver has that kind of a body that can shield a defender away. I mean, it's perfect time. I mean, good spot for the throw and a good guy to throw it to a turn. McNeil and McCarthy picked him up and drilled him. Johnson checks in, number 13, first and goal. Sanchez on the run. Caught at the two by Damian Williams. Second and goal from there. This is another thing I'm really impressed with Sanchez. Watching him on tape is his ability to roll left or right and make throws on the move. They run a lot of boot action. And uh, this, he's under pressure. He's being chased, and he throws one right where Williams can make the play. Pete Carroll says he has a big arm. He moves well. He's smart. He's coachable. What's not to like? Yeah. Johnson walks in. 12th play of the drive, and they pay it off with Christopher down the center, leading the way up the middle. And Stephon Johnson with his eighth rushing touchdown of the year. He's the guy who doesn't have quite as much speed as the other two featured backs, but he's a little bigger, a little stronger, and more dependable for this club. Said they nicknamed the three of them Earth, Wind, and Fire. He is Earth, the harder running guy. <laughs> and they've got a hit. <laughs> Beeler with a point after. 79-yard drive at 7 nothing. Aerial coverage of tonight's game provided to you by Goodyear. Football's rough. Your commute shouldn't be. So get there on Goodyear's silent armor technology. Beautiful L.A. Coliseum. And there is Joe Montana, who applied his trade at Notre Dame before going on to San Francisco. He of the great touch and the big play. Favorite quarterback. As a son here at USC, has another son who's playing at Oaks Christian as a quarterback. Same place where... Uh, Jimmy Clawson play. Beeler, how about that one? Three yards out of the back of the end zone. Let's take a look back with our Mercedes-Benz drive recap. Well, Mark Sanchez responded, led the drive. Stephon Johnson running the football, opening up things, throwing it. This is a beautiful throw in the face to Damian Williams. And then Stephon Johnson pays it off at the end. A very methodical drive. Pass and run, and uh, SC on the scoreboard first. Early in the game, you have the feeling Notre Dame has to respond. Clawson, play fake. Under pressure on Mondo Allen underneath, and he is dumped immediately by Maeva. Talk about Maeva. He uh, 
you know, played behind Keith Rivers for a couple of years, who was an outstanding linebacker here, while the other guys, Mawaluga and Cushing, were starting when they were younger. That's Ken Norton, a linebacker coach, one of the, the best linebacker coaches in college football. And uh, I, I have a, really taken advantage of this year being a starter and playing. Doesn't get the notoriety, been very productive. You could win a lot of games for these three linebackers and just eight people. Just pick eight guys off the street, and these three linebackers, you got a shot. Here's Reese. All right, Mike, Oklahoma leads the nation in turnover margin. They used an interception to set up this touchdown from DeMarco Murray, and in Bedlam, just like that, Sooners have an early 7-0 lead. It's on ABC in high definition. Well, you know, Reese, somebody is going to be brokenhearted in the South in the Big 12. It just seems almost unfair that one of those teams will not have a chance to play for a national title. They're just so good. Allen, no sir, Cushing was waiting for him. Walked off the first tackle and Cushing ate him up. But it was Mayava again who was the guy that flashed into the backfield and forced Allen to try to bounce it outside. It was a run blitz. Watch Mayava time it, gets into the backfield, forces Allen to bounce it out, and then Cushing was there to wrap him up and finish. Lost to kick to Johnson. So they shall bring some pressure ahead. Eight guys to the line of scrimmage. Line drive returnable kick. Johnson. No place to go. Gives ground. Oh, most. Poor guy. And he turns it into something spectacular. A one yard return after a punt of 37. Get everything you need to know about the NFL tomorrow on ESPN. First at 11 a.m. Eastern, Chris Berman and NFL Sunday Countdown presented by IBM. And Chris and John Saunders will deliver today's highlights and scores on SportsCenter at 7 Eastern. NFL Countdown presented by IBM at 11 a.m. SportsCenter presented by Bud Light at 7 p.m. tomorrow on ESPN. I think this is really an important drive for the Notre Dame defense. I think they've got to step up and get a stop here. They've got to not allow USC to jump out fast on them in this early part of the game. Sanchez goes underneath to his tight end, Anthony McCoy. And McCoy takes it out for about eight yards before Kyle McCarthy can get him out of bounds. The tight ends for USC have not been big time receivers this year. They're better run blockers, but this time nobody picks him up. Nobody accounts for him as he crosses the field. And Sanchez does the right thing coming to his underneath receiver who's wide open. 12 catches in 11 games for Anthony Ford. Of course, they lost Fred Davis, the tremendous tight end from a year ago, and into the pros to the Redskins. Movement up front, Notre Dame trying to convince the officials on the offense. that it's on the offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. And even though his name is spelled H-E-B-E-R-E-R, -E -E it is Zach Heber. There's a few extra letters in there. Yeah, they just threw in another E-R. in the Notre Dame defense. I thought last week against Syracuse they played very well until the end. And they really let down in the last scoring drive by Syracuse that put Syracuse on top by a point. But uh, they have got to make a statement here. Gable on the toss. Nice cut. First down and more. Gable nearly broke it a long way. Takes it down to the 42. Patrick Turner was on the corner. He may have been guilty of a hold on Robert Bland. Holding. On the offense, number one, ten-yard penalty, second down. Patrick Turner. That's why it looks so easy to get around the corner. Oh, here's Patrick Turner. Now watch as he's downfield trying to get a block on the corner. He's just going to try to turn, just kind of overruns him, and then instinctively grabs him and pulls him to the ground. And that's a, a big break for Notre Dame because that was a good-looking run for C.J. Gable. What was a short yardage situation now has them all the way back to the 31 yard line. 
And second and 16. Sanchez in the middle of the pocket goes underneath to Williams. Damian Williams running through traffic across midfield. And he's got the first down, a gain of 21. Here's Reese. That's the end of the first quarter from Los Angeles. And it's USC on top of Notre Dame, 7-0. Welcome back to Los Angeles, 7 nothing Trojans over the Irish. There's some crazy statistics for USC this year. They have dominated every quarter all year long. Look at the third quarter, 80-7. Yeah. to seven. And the fourth quarter, 91-12. to 12. That means in all these games, they've given up 19 points in the second half. I'd say that means they've got pretty decent halftime adjustments. Cool. <laughs> McKnight got away twice. Good hustle by Darius Fleming. He'll play it without a helmet. It doesn't matter. Let's check in with Ollie. Well, guys, there's a serious vibe here on the Notre Dame sideline. A lot of talking. Charlie Weiss just came back and addressed his offense, talking about they are ready to get more aggressive right here. He said, we have got to go out and set a tone right now, set a pace. Ron Paulus went along, kind of punched everybody in the chest all the way down to the offensive line, saying, let's get ready to roll. I get the feeling they're going to really pick up the pace, pick up the tempo on this next offensive series. Well, that, that's why I think this defensive series for Notre Dame is very, very critical. They can't afford to let their team go down 14 nothing at this point in the game. McKnight on the swing and Notre Dame ready for it. Pat Coates was over there. He had seen that on film and was right in the face of McKnight. I mean, let, let's figure this out now. And, and Pat Coates is a guy who is really a, a nice player. I mean, he is a guy who really gets after it. He's buried down in here. But he's going to read the zone. He's going to read the screen. He's going to feel the lineman give and give and give. And he reads it. He releases out and makes a tackle on a guy who is much quicker and more agile than he is. That's just a, a great effort play by a senior, Pat Coates. This is the play right here for Notre Dame. Third and a mile, they ought to be able to shut this down. Sanchez on the run. Forced out of bounds, shot of the 40-yard line. Good hustle by that defense. And we're going to have to keep an eye on any time these players go sailing into yeah. each other's benches after what happened before this game. Pat Kuntz is... Uh... Not his lunch isn't agreeing with him too much right now. Yeah, he made that play on the mm -hmm. sideline. That was a big stop, a big stop for Notre Dame. And they have thrown a flag. No penalty on the play. Fourth down. And somebody may have miscounted the number of players out there. <laughs> And went back through the drill and found out there were only 11. Golden Tate's very dangerous kick returner is back. I think they got to find a way to get him the football in this possession. If they're going to be aggressive, get the ball to Golden Tate this drive. I know you remember John Wayne on the silver screen, but he won't start on a different stage. We'll find out when we come back and play Did You Know? All right, Delbro. Beautiful night in Southern California, 7-0 USC over Notre Dame. And this USC defense has been stifling all year, particularly at home. They have not allowed a touchdown here in the last 251 minutes, 38 seconds. For all you non-math majors, that works out to 16 points. Clawson wants to go deep, forced out of the pocket on the run. Still on a run, dives down at the 19-yard line. Now they had three shots at him and finally got him. Kyle Moore, number 84, put him down at the 19 for a loss of six. Well, credit to coverage in the back end of the SC defense because Jimmy Clawson was looking to go play action deep. He gets flushed out of the pocket. 
does a nice job of not forcing a throw. Again, the, the interceptions when they've played away from home have really been a problem for Jimmy Clausen. Even though he lost yardage there, he made a good decision not to force a throw. Notre Dame has to use the timeout. They've had 10 plays so far and picked up a grand total of 16 yards. This is the 57th ranked offense against the number one ranked defense. Notre Dame trailing USC here early in the second quarter. Well, right there, number three is Michael Floyd, and uh, Notre Dame really misses him in this offense. He is an excellent-looking freshman. Good speed, excellent hands, 46 catches before he was out with the knee injury. They miss him on the other side of Golden Tate. Had already broken the freshman receiving records for the, for the school. Rudolph, the tight end, makes the catch. And Cushing takes him out of bounds. Rudolph's been very active this year, 25 catches for him. And Rudolph is a true freshman as well out of Cincinnati Elder High School who is playing for the state championship today back in the state of Ohio against St. Ignatius. But they've got some good-looking young players. Rudolph is one. Michael Floyd, another offensive true freshman. Trevor Robinson starting at right guard tonight, a true freshman. Uh, they, uh, they're having to grow up early, that's for sure. Third and 11 for Clawson, four man rush for the Trojans. And Clawson from behind, they got there. Ball came loose. Armando Allen ended up with it. I think Clay Matthews came from behind, knocked it away, or did he pass it to Allen? Good job by Clawson, just rid of it, I guess. Well, third down and long. SC thinking pass all the way. They get pressure to collapse the pocket. Clay Matthews. Does a great job of, of, of rushing the passer, knocking the ball loose. A real success story. He came here as a walk-on, and he's leaving as a senior starter who will be playing in the NFL next year. Stephon Johnson. Got the bounce this time on the punt. Good Notre Dame inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. They will start from there. Time now to play Did You Know? Our subject, John Wayne. Before he became a movie icon, starring in such classics as Stagecoach, The Green Berets, and True Grit, he played football at USC under the name of Marion Morrison. He played for legendary coach Howard Jones, and when he injured himself body surfing, he was so terrified at Jones' reaction that he refused to reveal the actual cause of the injury. He ended up losing his athletic scholarship and without funds had to leave the university. Somehow he made do. <laughs> and the great icons in the history of entertainment. Damian Williams with another catch dives forward for a couple. You know, my boys love John Wayne. Love John Wayne movies. Sure. We've got a bunch of them in our video library and uh, the card that I read said classics like Green Berets. I'm not sure Green Berets <laughs> was a classic, yeah. but he was in it, so it was oh, good yeah. enough. I think I've got on my uh, on my phone. I got this, the shootest. Was that his last? That Western was his movie when he was dying. That was the last movie he did. Slipping out for a couple, Stephon Johnson. Here's Reese Davis. Reese. All right, thanks, Reese. There's a lot of interest in that Tennessee situation here. A lot of talk about Lane Kiffin being the next head coach at Tennessee. Lane Kiffin was an offensive coordinator here before he went to the Raiders. Sanchez had that one tipped and incomplete. It was the nose man. Ian Williams, 6 2 3 10, got a hand up and tipped it. And the longer that Notre Dame can hang around in this game, the more confidence they're going to get. They're starting to get some pressure, get their hands on some footballs. That's back-to-back -back stops by this Notre Dame defense. Now they got to hope that Jimmy Clausen and the offense can give them a little break over on the sideline. Boyd Nick will kick to Tate. Notre Dame got a little bit of pressure on. And Tate saves a lot of yardage, runs up on it. 
and makes the catch just shy of midfield. This week on Monday Night Football, an AFC matchup in the South. David Gerard and Maurice Jones Drew head to Houston to take on rookie sensation Steve Slate and the Texans. Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8:30 Eastern. Our coverage starts at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown delivered by UPS. Well, the best field position for Notre Dame. This is their fifth offensive possession, and they're still looking for their first first down. So they, they at least have the field position to go for it here. Golden Tate, top of your screen, but the quarterback looking the other way. It's tipped up in the air, and Malava makes the catch. An interception. Mawaluga was the first guy to get a hand on it. Well, there was a mix-up, too, between the tight end, Rudolph, and the quarterback, Clawson. Rudolph broke out. Clawson threw the ball in and hit Mawaluga. Here's Mawaluga. He's going to drop. Rudolph is going to break out, and Jimmy Clawson is expecting him to turn back in. Clawson lets go of the football, and it goes right to Mawaluga, who tips it up. And Mayava comes away with the interception. So excellent field position. Goes for nothing as Jimmy Clausen throws his second interception here in the first half. That won't drive a quarterback crazy, will it, when the receiver goes the wrong way? McKnight, the tailback, and he'll get the carry. Tries to take it outside. Now catch it back. The kid's got blazing speed. Nice cut, and he just... you what a runner he is. He made a great cut, and then that burst of speed looked like two guys had the angle on him. It turned out they had no chance. He has great speed, and he has a unique ability to change directions without losing speed. When you watch him, he is so fluid in his movement in the open field. And uh, that was a real letdown by the Notre Dame defense after the sudden change. They got two stops in a row. Their offense turns it over in one play, and they're not ready to play when they stepped on the field for the first down play. For McKnight to sophomore, his first rushing touchdown of the season. And USC strikes quickly, capitalizing on the pass interception set up by Mawaluga, the All-American middle linebacker who kept it alive, and McKnight finished it off. Let's take a look at tonight's Affleck. trivia question. Since 1978, what five FBS, formerly 1A schools, have never played an FCS, formerly 1AA opponent? Geez, with all numbers and the letters, I'm confused. Allen and Tate are deep. Beeler to kick, and he has just crushed every opportunity he's had tonight. This kid's also an athlete. He was a running back and a linebacker in high school and junior college. He came here as a backup fullback and linebacker. Five yards deep, Armando Allen will bring this one out. Across the 25 to about the 27 yard line. Let's go back to the score, Todd. Well, a couple excellent blocks. I talked about the tight ends, how they block in this offense. Watch Anthony McCoy get a great block to seal the corner. And then Havili, the fullback, comes in motion and does a great job kicking out and opening up the lane for Joe McKnight. First, it's the tight end, and then it's the fullback. And that's all of a crease that Joe McKnight needed. With that speed and shiftiness in the open field, he takes it to the end zone. Notre Dame has had the ball five times, but they have only run 13 plays. Armando Allen, they got him going east to the left, and they'll drag him out of bounds. He had a gain of two or three yards. It looked like he might have gotten more. He turned sideways, and Taylor Mays, at 230 pounds, just ran him down like he was standing still and tossed him out of bounds. Well, amazingly, at six foot three, 230 pounds, Taylor Mays may be the fastest guy on the football team. Here he is out here. He's a rangy free safety. He's a sub 4 3 40 guy. Great speed and range in the back end 
of this SC defense. Just a junior, one of those guys considering whether to stay another year or not, will be a first-round draft pick at some point whenever he goes. Pressure on Cross, and down he goes at the 20. Clay Matthews and Philly Moala. Two more superstars on this defense, and they met at the quarterback. You mentioned Clay Matthews came here as a walk-on. He only had one scholarship offer out of high school, and that was to, to go to Idaho. He came here as a walk-on. His dad, of course, was a great player here, and he has made himself not only a player, but an outstanding player. And he's gotten bigger and stronger, and he has really played well and has that stand-up defensive end position in this SC defense. Third and long again for Clawson. Four man to rush. And Clawson has to throw it away. Moala and Cushing applying the pressure. For more on Clay Matthews, here's Holly. Well, it's inspirational how Clay Matthews has made himself into a highly regarded NFL prospect, guys. He was too skinny to play defensive end, but he made a name for himself on special teams. Pete Carroll has said of him, he will probably be remembered as one of the best special teams players ever to play at USC, which is high praise indeed. But what's really made him good this year is he can drop in coverage, he can rush the passer, he can take on tackles, tight ends. They said he can actually do everything in that hybrid position. Boy, it was his dad, Holly, one heck of a player. Played tremendous longevity, found a way just not to get hurt and was always making huge plays and always the kind of a guy that his teammates look to. 50-yard kick, four-yard return. And now the answer to tonight's Half trivia question since 1978, what five FBS, formerly 1A schools, have never played an FCS, formerly 1AA opponent? Do you know the five? Well, tonight's game might give you a clue. Notre Dame and USC. The other one's a little tougher. Michigan State, UCLA, and Washington. That's a tough one. Yes, it is. USC from the 33. McKnight. See, that's what you have to do with Joe McKnight. You, you can't give him creases because of his speed and his ability to change directions without losing speed. You've got to really take away angles. You've got to take away creases. And you do that by run blitzing or slanting or stunning. And that time, Notre Dame did a great job of stopping him right at the point of attack and giving him nowhere to run. Stephon Robinson, one of the three running backs, says, sure, everybody likes to play, get a lot of carries, but we're fresh at this yeah. point of the season because the three of us are rotating. They basically split the carries, and nobody's beaten up. Sanchez underneath McKnight. Gain of 16. Thought it was interesting. Steve Sarkeesian said of Joe McKnight, he could really line up and play wide receiver for us if we needed it. He's that good of a receiver. Great hands, runs routes, excellent coming out of the backfield. Of all three of those tailbacks, he is certainly the most effective in the passing game for this USC offense. Southern California is just such a hotbed of recruiting. So many great players out here, much like Texas, much like Florida. And Pete Carroll has taken advantage of that. Sanchez down the sideline. Havili, the fullback. Stanley Havili still on his feet, looking for a block. Run out of gas, down to the 12. Boy, has Sanchez found his rhythm. That one is for 39. I think Stanley is thinking, ooh, I didn't know. Didn't know it was that far downfield. Uh, Harrison Smith is on a blitz. He's going to try to go airborne to get to the quarterback, but not in time. Havili came in motion and ran a little wheel route. Out and up on the linebacker, Kerry Neal. And then you see his versatility. He is a guy who does a little bit of everything. He lines up and plays true fullback. He lines up and goes in motion. Lines up as a wide receiver. Right now, he's uh, on all fours trying to get himself back together. But again, Steve Sarkeesian said, outside of our quarterback, he may be the most valuable guy in our offense because he does so many different things for us. We use him and utilize him in a lot of different ways. 
Kavili gets a nice hand as he leaves. He's one of their top pass catchers this year. That was 25 for him. And he's had three touchdowns through the year. But came up a little gimpy after that catch. And right now, Sanchez is going back, hitting that plant foot, and the ball's gone. It's all about rhythm. You know, and he's, he's in a good rhythm right now. He overcame that early interception, was able to shake it off. The last year against Notre Dame, he threw the ball 32 times in the first half in the game at South Bend. Had an excellent game. Starting to become apparent how much Notre Dame is being overwhelmed in this game as C.J. Gable gets a couple. What's at stake? Well, if you're Notre Dame, maybe the future of Charlie Weiss. And for USC, a BCS bowl bid, another 10-win season. That's ho-hum for Pete Carroll. Yeah. Would have a chance to get his 11th next year. He would go with a win tonight. Pete Carroll will go over the 85% mark for his career as a coach at USC. And that's just ludicrous. Well, after his first year, I mean, he has been as close to, a, you know, in an age, in an era where you think dynasties wouldn't happen anymore. Absolutely. He's, he's had a dynasty. <laughs> Sanchez, holy cow. Damian Williams, the most dangerous receiver on this field, somehow eludes everybody. Takes it over the middle for a touchdown. Now, if you don't blow a coverage, you better blow it on somebody other than Damian Williams. Well, that was uh, another real letdown. Three Notre Dame defenders went one way and uh, nobody, nobody accounted for Damian Williams. Williams having a decent first half, seven catches, 78 yards on the touchdown. That'll work. 21-0 USC at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Twenty-one nothing. The fifth-ranked Trojans over Notre Dame. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, after Damian Williams caught that touchdown pass, he was cradling the ball, brought it all the way to the sideline. I thought maybe he was going to keep it for a souvenir, and I didn't know why because he's had so many. But he came over and handed the ball off to Lendell White, former USC running back, who's been in the media this week, complaining pretty publicly that he hasn't gotten the ball enough. So Damian Williams <laughs> said, "Here you go, big fella. Here's the ball." Oh, that's great. Way to go, Holly. Allen and Tate are deep. <laughs> and Lundale obviously appreciated that. Boy, USC, what a football team. Allen eight yards deep. They'll start from the 20, and what a weapon Beeler is as a kickoff man. Well, I want to go back and show you on this touchdown. The tight end, Anthony McCoy, is going to run to the corner. Ronald Johnson right here is going to go on a crossing route. That's going to leave the Damian Williams. He's going to come out and go in the middle, and nobody is going to go with him. Watch as this opens up now. Three defenders are going to go with the tight end right here. Oh, one guy goes with Johnson. Nobody goes with the most dangerous guy of the bunch, and it's an easy touchdown pass for Mark Sanchez. Hey, Kyle Rudolph's pretty good, but I don't know that you want to be triple teamer. Here's Reese Davis. All right, Reese, 17 plays, 12 yards for Notre Dame. 12 with four minutes to go in the half. Crossing underneath, there's a flag down. Armando Allen is hit, and this one will probably come back for holding. Let me go back to the first part of the ball game. We expected Notre Dame to come out and throw. Holding on the offense, number 74. Half the distance to the goal, second down. And try to throw deep. Best time to do that is nothing, nothing, maybe down seven, nothing. Now you're down 21, nothing. With this offense, does it matter if you're going to throw deep now? Well, at this point, it's more difficult because if you're USC, you're going to rush three like they did that time, and they're going to just drop and just try to keep everything in front of them. They're not going to give you man coverage. They're not going to give you opportunities to throw the ball deep down the field. Look at this coverage. Look how deep the linebackers are. They want to keep everything in front of them. Crossing in trouble in the end zone. Throws too high. 
That was intended for Tate, but you're right, Todd. They dropped seven guys, just covered them like a blanket. Uh, at this point, they're telling the, the front four, the front three, you guys just pin your ears back and go. And we're going to keep all these white shirts in front of us. We're not going to give up any cheap plays. If they move on us, they're going to have to pick us all the way down the field. They're going to have to earn everything. Third and 23. Cross into the shotgun. Four-man rush. Pressure coming. Almost had the safety. Now here's another one of those guys. Feely Moala is a guy who is a, a senior who has played outstanding up front for SC. He has been the guy that has set the tone for this SC defense. Just an inside rip move on the on the defense, on the offensive guard. Gets inside, forces Clawson up in the pocket, and uh, and for Jimmy Clawson, this is just uh, cool. getting more and more nightmarish as the game goes. Moala has one and a half sacks in this game. There are people who will tell you he will be the first or second defensive lineman taken in the next year's NFL draft. As we mentioned before, this team is just loaded. Another poor kick. Johnson. There's a flag down. I think this is going to come back. Stephon Johnson, 35-yard return for a touchdown on a very returnable short low kick but let's check the markers during the return legal block in the back on the return team number 47 10 yard penalty for the spot of the infraction also after the play was over Excessive celebration on the return team. 15-yard penalty. First and 10, USC. Well, that's about the only way Notre Dame can get him to go backwards. Yeah. Well, it was Clay Matthews, one of their seniors, one of their real leaders on the team. Clay Matthews right here who plays on all the special teams. Holly talked about how great a special teams player he is. This time he just a little over aggressive gets the block in the back that is going to nullify the touchdown but that's Stephon Johnson at the end of the play with the uh, excessive celebration Pete Carroll was not very happy about that no first he yelled at his player now he's yeah. yelling at the official he's going to get everybody on this sequence Matthews was the only one you couldn't yell about that was an obvious block in the back well, they backed him up to the 50 after two 15-yard penalties. They wipe out the touchdown. Gable is back in at the running back spot behind Sanchez. Sanchez pump and go. A great fake by Sanchez. Goes down the sideline. He had Gable open if he wanted to dump it off but pumped and got the defender in the air. You know, he's kind of deceiving because he's got that big knee brace on his left knee, which which just as you look at him, you wouldn't think that he was very mobile or very quick, but he really moves well in and out of the pocket. He does a great job rolling out. Ball fake gets Harrison Smith up in the air and turns it into a nice play. Well, that's a no-no for Harrison Smith. Yeah. You can't do that. Got a chance to talk to Sanchez earlier this week. What a nice kid. Very bright young man. Pressure coming from behind. Can't get away. Fumble. Out of bounds. Will they rule it incomplete or a fumble? They're saying fumble. At least initially. From behind, Maurice Crum, yeah. who was singled out by the USC players as a guy they were really worried about on defense. Well, Maurice Crum came from the blind side of Sanchez. He did not see him. He probably felt him and heard him coming, but he didn't see him, was not able to protect the football. But Notre Dame not able to come up with it. it Looks like Steve Filer may have had a shot at it. Or was it Kerry Neal? Neal, but couldn't come up with it in time. So second down and about 18 yards to go. Gable. Stumbles as he got to the 41. Here's Holly Rowe. 
Well, fullback Stanley Havili came out. They examined his left knee. It was pretty bloody and messed up when he came off the field after that long run he had. He hit it hard on the ground, but he's standing by the offensive coaches looking like he can and will go back in. One other quick note, Nick Howell, right tackle, is out. His backup, Butch Lewis, is a sophomore. He's playing for him now. Howell's dad, ha uh, Pat, was an All-American guard here in 1978. This is a very young offensive line. This is not like the monsters they had a year ago. But they've done pretty well. Blitz coming. Sanchez gets away. And throws complete. What a job by Sanchez. Patrick Turner down to the pitch. Well, that's his beautiful pocket presence by Mark Sanchez. Not to panic. Again, he is a first-year starter. He feels the pressure. He, this time he sees it. It came into his vision, and he doesn't panic. He steps up in the pocket. He's still able to find Turner down the field and make the throw. It's a lot different when you see that pressure as when it comes from your backside. And a perfect throw on the sideline to Turner. Turner approaching the top 10 all-time in the receiving category at USC. Well, you asked the question earlier. How would Sanchez do after the interception? 15 out of 16 for 175 yards. That good enough for you? At least Turner had turned the wrong way. Pass was incomplete from Sanchez to Patrick Turner. She so ran a corner route. Well, they've got 44 seconds left. They've got two of their timeouts, so they're uh, they're in a good position right here. Mark Sanchez, chance to put another touchdown on the board before halftime. Spread the field with four wide receivers. Sanchez somehow came out of the pile but ran into two more Notre Dame defenders including Ethan Johnson and Torian Smith so they've called a timeout and stopped the clock and here's Reese all right Reese and of course everybody here in the Coliseum keeping an eye on that Oregon Oregon State score if Oregon State loses tonight Southern California would have to win next week against UCLA and the Rose Bowl is there third down with 35 seconds to go in the half blitz Sanchez with a man around one leg throws incomplete intended for Turner got one hand on it and that was it well, well sitting on the field goal you he had beaten Gary Gray to the end zone but the pressure you mentioned it he had a guy wrapped around his leg was not able to really step into this throw Notre Dame dialed up the heat came after him and Sanchez not quite able to make an accurate throw a little double move by Patrick Turner and a slight overthrow. Beeler with that very strong leg will try one from 35. And it's true right down the middle. USC has taken advantage of every opportunity but that first turnover. Let's take a look at our good hands flashback presented by Allstate. Notre Dame and USC in 1988. They entered the game undefeated, ranked one and two, a stingy defense led by the spectacular play of Stan Smagala and the big play capabilities of Tony Rice. The 10-0 Irish remain perfect as they beat the Trojans 24-10. Lou Holtz and Notre Dame would go on to win the national championship as they beat West Virginia in the Fiesta Bowl 24-10. 35 yards on the field goal by David Mueller. 24 seconds for First time away. Well, I think so far after the, the first half of this ball game, it's pretty evident that the, the USC defense is all that they were advertised to be. Well, we knew coming in, they had the rankings, and uh, they've got the potential high draft picks. How'd they lose a the game? Because it's college football. It's college football. You've got 18, 19 year old kids who uh, don't always come ready to play. And in the first half of the game against Oregon State and Corvallis, they were not ready to play. And Oregon State, to their credit, in that game ran the ball 
very well. They ran the ball for over 200 yards. Jacquez Rogers had a big game, the, the freshman tailback. They made a furious comeback in the second half, but they dug themselves such a hole early, they weren't able to recover. Obviously, barring, uh, barring some kind of a miracle, Notre Dame was going to lose this game. They've never lost this many games in two years in Notre Dame football history, and that goes back a heck of a long way. Seconds to go. Beeler finally kicks one that's only a yard deep in the end zone. Armando Allen cut down as he reached the 25 yard line. You can get all the NFL news and analysis you need tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern. Chris Berman hosts Sunday NFL Countdown, presented by IBM. Minute 7 Eastern. Chris Berman and John Saunders with Sports Center, presented by Bud Light at 7 o'clock. Armando Allen is down. Notre Dame's leading rusher. And probably their most uh, dangerous offensive weapon outside of Golden Tate. And if you're Charlie Weiss right now, you're in a position where there isn't a whole lot you can do. This is not a team made to come back in big chunks. Allen may have twisted the knee or his ankle on the tackle by Garrett Green, who's a tremendous athlete. He's played quarterback, wide receiver, defensive back, and Allen, unable to put any weight on that one leg, is going to be helped off the field. Very, very good football player, and that'll be a big loss for Notre Dame. He's the only one who has any positive yardage tonight. Ten yards for Allen. The rest of the Notre Dame offense has minus four. Now this is a great USC defense but minus four total offense is just not going to get it done. And part of that has to do with an offense that's just not very good and hasn't been all year. With a score, Trojans. Holly Rowe. Hey, Coach, uh, I know it's been hard for your offense to get something going, but what can you do to help protect your quarterback? Well, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to throw three-step drops because every time we go to five-step drop, he's under duress. So what we're going to what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to try to run the ball inside. They've gone to a soft two-shell. We're going to have to try to run the ball and throw three-step drops. With this injury to Armando, how does that affect the running game? Well, we then? go with Robert and, Robert and uh, James. We're, we're confident Robert and James. But right now, if we don't get something going on offense, we're hanging a defense out to dry. Thanks, Coach. Our halftime score, USC 24, Notre Dame nothing. Now let's go to Reese Davis in the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. Take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Samsung. This is staggering. 266 yards to nine. Count of nine yards in the first half. And that's how dominant this game has been. Uh, actually, Notre Dame is pretty lucky that it's only 24 yeah. to nothing. Yeah, I mean, I know USC's defense is outstanding. I mean, they're as good a defense as we've seen all year, but I mean, Come on, nine yards, 20 plays. That is anemic. This is the one area Notre Dame is the number one return team in the country for kickoffs. Southern Cal is. Notre Dame is the number one cover team for kickoffs. Walker. 
very high short kick taken by one of the up men out across the 40 yard line. A USC coming into the uh, season a lot of people thought USC was the most powerful football team in the country preseason and except for that one loss you know, it's tough to say except for right. but uh, they've shown they have more talent than anybody else. well they're, they're outstanding and, and the defense I was anxious to see them live and in person and they are as advertised and they're a dominant defense they're great against the run they're very physical up front and uh, they're, they're excellent against the pass. I mean, this is a this may be the best defense in all of college football. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those defenses that you'd like to see matched up against an Oklahoma offense, uh, against a Texas Tech offense. You know, that kind of a matchup yep. to see uh, just how they stack up. Because uh, in a game like this, it's an absolute mismatch. After a mistake on the opening drive, Mark Sanchez has nearly been perfect. Gable, student body right. The old John Robinson offense for USC. Gable up to the 50. It's interesting, this USC offense. Uh, you know, you think of the past, you think of Matt Leinart and Carson Palmer and how they've thrown the football and the wide receivers, but. This year, they have really played to their strength. They have averaged, coming into the game tonight, 39 rushing attempts a game and 29 pass attempts a game, which is good balance. And they've played to the strength, which is their defense. They've been kind of conservative at times. I mentioned last year, Mark Sanchez threw 32 times in the first half against Notre Dame. That's more than eight of the games, total games, that he's thrown this season. Incomplete intent for Turner. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, I spoke to USC's Pete Carroll at the half. I asked him what he liked about the first half, and he said everything. He said what he's looking for here in the second half, though, is he wants his seniors to put the hammer down. He said these guys have invested so much in this program. I can't imagine anything but them for them to go out and give everything they have to close out their career here. Also, two more quick injury updates on Notre Dame. Mike Canelo and Armando Allen will not return. Okay, thank you, Holly. Voidnick to punt to Grimes. Who makes the fair catch down around the 12? Let's check in with Reese Davis. Just asking. How long have you been sitting on that? No, it just honestly, it just occurred to me. Duval Kamara catches the ball out in the flat. Oregon State 7-1, USC 7-1. Of course, the Trojans' only loss came to Oregon State. Oregon in third place and could tie for second with a win tonight. USC, if Oregon State loses, would have to beat UCLA next week for the Pac-10 title and the automatic spot in the Rose Bowl. Opposite Penn State. Be a pretty good matchup, wouldn't it? Oh, very good matchup. Boy, there's just nothing there for anything they have run so far. Robert Hughes... Got back to the line of scrimmage, Mayava, who has been uh, so active tonight, made the tackle. This is a different alignment that you don't see many college teams use, but they, they cover the two guards in the center, and then they stand up on the end of the line, Matthews and Cushing. It's kind of the old Buddy Ryan Bear defense where they really pressure the line of scrimmage, and they've got the personnel to do it. It's, a, it's an NFL style, and they really use it effectively here. Boston out in the flat, nothing doing. He just makes the catch and he's buried. You know, what was interesting to me, Todd, when Buddy Ryan used that defense in Chicago when he had all those great players, it was the best defense in the yeah. NFL. He went to Arizona and ran the same defense, and they were dreadful because he didn't have the people around him. Well, you, you've got to have, yeah, you got to have the right people. You better have some corners that can cover, too, because you put them out there in man-to-man -man coverage a lot. And you better have a free safety that's rangy and can cover a lot of ground. And uh, SC has that, plus the, the guys that can put pressure on the line of scrimmage. Moss to kick to McKnight. Low snap. High and very short. Makes a Notre Dame bounce across midfield down to the 47. Kick of only 34. 
Coming up, Taste of the Town heads west, and Todd sinks his teeth into a little bit of history, as well as a French dip sandwich. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Hampton Hotels. 24-0 USC Trojans have the ball at their own 47-yard line after the punt. It's been a game of total domination. Sanchez out in the flat. Johnson flag down at the end of the play. Damian Williams may be the guilty party. ACC crew tonight officiating this game here in Los Angeles. I'm sorry, Big East crew. No penalty on the play for illegal block in the back. Boy, that was right in front of the Notre Dame bench, and they were upset. They're going to pick up the flag. Now, close. I'm sure Damian Williams made much contact with him, trying to help out uh, Stephon Johnson. And it was a gain of just about 10. I really like Damian Williams. He was, uh, as we mentioned earlier, one of those guys from Springdale High School in Springdale, Arkansas. Played for Gus Malzahn at that high school, right. and uh, Mitch Mustaine was a the quarterback. They had five Division I players go off of that team. Three of them, I think, went to Arkansas. Of course, a little bit of a, a falling out there after their freshman year. Damian Williams was the first guy to decide to leave and go to the USC. Mitch Mustaine followed a little bit later, and uh, at least at this point, has worked out much better for Damian Williams than it has for Mitch Mustaine. Of course, both of them caught up in the soap opera of Houston McNutt and Malzahn, who was his offensive coordinator. Malzahn has hence moved on, and so yeah. is Houston, Houston Nutt. Malzahn now the offensive coordinator at Tulsa, a very explosive, high-scoring, high-powered offense. And uh, really one of the guys that they're giving a lot of credit for for uh, kind of infusing the college football and the National Football League with the Wildcat type formation or the uh, direct snap to a running back. Second and inches. Stephon Johnson. Nice little hesitation move there. Picks up the first down. Time now for Todd's Taste of the Town. Brought to you by Chase. Here in downtown Los Angeles, there's a legendary restaurant known as Philippe's that was started in 1908 by a guy named Philippe Mathieu. Now, the story goes that one day he was preparing a sandwich for a customer when he accidentally dropped the French loaf into a roasting pan of juice still hot from the oven. The customer said he'd take the sandwich anyway, and the next day he returned with three or four of his buddies for some more of those dip sandwiches. Thus was born the French dip sandwich. We'll check on the uh, rest of the menu here in a second. Complete pass down to the 20-yard line. Ronald Johnson out of Muskegon, Michigan. Makes that catch and picks up a first down. What did Todd have? Take a look. You place your order at Philippe's behind a long display counter where one of their 10 servers, known as Carvers, will take care of your entire meal. Now, once you decide what kind of meat you want on your sandwich, the next choice is, what do you want with the juice? Single dip, double dip, or wet? For me, it's roast beef and Monterey Jack, double dip. Ooh la la. You've had fun doing that, haven't you? I haven't lied. Not to mention all the calories you've sucked up. USC just continues to bomb away. Damian Williams fights all the way down inside the two. He just would not go down. Shook tackler after tackler. Yeah, that's bad fundamentals by Notre Dame. They give the cushion, and if you're going to do that, you better come up and make sure tackles. And he just shrugs off two or three Notre Dame defenders that don't want to take him to the ground and does the right thing, just keeps fighting for the goal line. a defense as good as USC has you can afford to be aggressive on offense and take chances and throw the ball and know that even if you make a mistake your defense is going to probably bail you out 
Stephon Johnson, the tailback. He gets the ball. Cuts back. Flag is down. They're going to bring this one back. On the offense, number 61, 10-yard penalty, first down. Christopher O'Dowd, the center, with a really good block and then a little bit more, I think. Dowd is one of the, the younger members of this offensive line. Four new starters to start this year. There's the, there's the hold right there. Got his arms around Koontz. Pat Koontz, the defensive tackle. Really, all he had to do was screen him off and get exactly. out and get in his way. There's no reason for him to grab on that play. So they'll back him up to the 12. And Sanchez to throw against a four-man rush into the end zone. Intercepted by McCarthy. Back to the nine-yard line and take it out of bounds. Charles Brown made the stop, but Sanchez with his second pick of the night. Well, this is a case where a quarterback does not have vision of the whole field. McCarthy is going to be right here, but watch as this play rolls. Sanchez is going to be looking to his left the whole way. Now, right here, he is looking this way only. And he has totally lost sight of another safety who's going to come right in front of him and get the interception. He's looking left. He throws it with no idea where McCarthy was. And again, this is a first-year starter who's been pretty flawless tonight. That time, he didn't see the whole coverage. So Notre Dame will take over just inside its eight-yard line. Clawson retreats. They had a screen set up, but there were as many USC players out on that screen as there were Notre Dame players. You were saying. This, I can see the frustration yeah, on your it's, face. It's, it's hard to watch. It really is. I mean, uh, they, they just have nothing that is threatening this USC defense at all. Charlie Weiss told Holly on the way off the field that they wanted to try to run inside a little bit to soften them up. That screen pass, uh, just, just nothing there. USC has just really snuffed out everything they've tried to do. 15 yards in total offense on 24 plays. Now make it 25 plays. 15 yards in total offense. This is Notre Dame. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, I can tell you they're not giving up here on the Notre Dame sideline, though. Just before this last offensive series, three of the offensive coaches came over, and you know they have those laminated play cards. Well, they were frantically writing down a whole new list of plays. Ron Paulus included. Uh, Clawson came over, was looking at the plays. They are constantly trying to adjust over here, trying to find anything that will work, guys. All right, Holly, third and ten. USC basically getting it done with a full down lineman. Hughes on the delay. Boy, and USC guys don't miss tackles either. Somebody grabs a ball carrier down, they go. Here's Reese. All right, Reese. Most will retreat to the end zone. They'll kick to McKnight, who waits at the 43-yard line of Notre Dame. Better kick this time. McKnight looking for a couple of blocks. Takes it inside the 45 to the 44th. 38-yard punt. 24-0 USC. We'll talk taste of the town from Los Angeles when we come back to the Coliseum. 18 seniors come out of the tunnel for the last time here at the L.A. Coliseum to the cheers of the home crowd, and they deserve some cheers. 22-81 for that senior class here at home. The only loss last year, the shocking loss to Stanford, 24-23. Stanford a 41-point underdog in that game. C.J. Gable. Boy, he may have hurt an ankle or twisted a knee. He went down very oddly on that cut, but pops right back up. Kind of thing that scares you here. Yeah. He's trying to make a cut in the hole. It just Ooh. looked like he slipped more than anything. It's a time of night where you're going to get a little moisture on top of the grass. They have rotated three very good tailbacks. 
Johnson is in there now. And out of bounds. The uh, you've done a lot of research on Taste of the Town this year. How did you find out about the the French dip at uh, Philippe's? Well, you know, Brian Yarrow, the guy who produced the segment, he and I do a lot of research and trying to find some stuff out in Philippe's. You know, they they got their history. Very proud of it. The interesting thing about that, the French dip sandwich, 1918, when it was started, is. They don't really know how it got called a French dip sandwich. It's either the fact that Philippe Mathieu was French heritage French. or the com customer that he made the sandwich for was a policeman whose last name was French. So go figure. It was one or the other, but uh, nobody knows for sure how it got the name. But he was going to tell me his last name was Dip. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the menu that uh, Todd has feasted on this year, and you can uh, check it all out at ESPN.com. Pick a favorite so far. Oh, man. I'll tell you what. I bet it was one of the breakfast places, wasn't it? You know what? I really did like that. That scrambler up in, up in Madison. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that quite a bit. Because you went back the next week, not yeah. for Taste of the Town, but yeah, you right. went back. I enjoyed that. They're, they're all good, though. I haven't had a bad one yet. No, I don't think you've ever met a meal you didn't like. Sanchez under pressure throws. Almost a sensational catch, but the flag is down anyway. It was intended for McKnight coming out of the backfield. Torian Smith, number 49, had the coverage, and Smith is really woofing at McKnight. Uh, McKnight just pointed to the scoreboard, which yeah. is... Uh, That'll do it. Yeah. On the defense. Number 49, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. That's usually the ultimate answer. Yeah. Say what you want, look at the scoreboard. That's a tough assignment for a middle linebacker trying to stay up with Joe McKnight on a route like that down the sideline. Oh, absolutely. Here's Holly. Well, Torian Smith's filling in for the injured Brian Smith. And when we talked to the one of the defensive coaches, John Tenuta, before the game, like what kind of player Torian Smith is, he said, he's a my yard guy. As in, don't bring that in my yard. I think that's what he was saying to McKnight. <laughs> yeah. This isn't his yard, though, Holly. <laughs> this is more Joe McKnight's yard than his. Gable inside the five near the two. So Gable obviously did not hurt himself when he slipped a couple of plays ago. Yeah, you, you've made the comment a couple times about the uh, the depth at the tailback position and the, the fact that they're all getting carries, they all stay fresh. And, and I think the most interesting thing about Pete Carroll's program here is how much it is based on competition and how everything they do in practice is very competitive. He, he tries to make everything competitive and these guys feed off of it, you know, and it's a culture now. I mean, it, in all positions, that's all everybody expects. Maybe the only position that it doesn't happen on a daily basis is quarterback. But every other, every, you know, position on the football team, I mean, you are fighting for your job every single week. But it's happened to the second, third, and fourth team quarterbacks. They that's right. bounce back and forth. Gable. Close, about a foot away. They'll mark it down there, but it will be a first down for USC, first and goal. You hear the players talking about competition Tuesday, where the top defense plays the top offense, ones against ones, yep. and some of the players swear it's harder than some of the games they've had. Right. And when you look at a defense, you can understand. Well, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, USC does more one against one or good against good than probably any other team in college football. Everybody does a little bit, whether it's a two-minute drill, whether it's a, uh, you know, a red zone period or something but they do it probably more extensively than anybody in college football. First and goal from a foot away. Gable. Touchdown. Followed Adam Goodman, the fullback, who took the only Notre Dame defender who might have had a shot and planted him. And then Gable walks in. For the point after. Way back to Putter is the holder.
and Baylor has been a busy guy this year. 31 nothing USC over Notre Dame third quarter. Guys who are going to be playing in the NFL wearing garnet and gold. And Beeler, boy, he's got a future. This kid can just crush it. Kickoff guys, you can put it in the end zone consistently. What a huge weapon. Every kick has gone to the end zone. This is Golden Tate. Oh. Malcolm Smith just unloads. Malcolm Smith is a backup linebacker, a sophomore out of Northridge, California, Tampa High School. That's going to leave him. Up. Yes, it will. Wow. Just another backup linebacker for USC. Hughes, the running back. Nothing. Mayava eats him up. Let's go to Reese. Well, you've got Yaks, Ducks, and Beavers. The same thing. <laughs> Clawson out in the flat to Hughes. Hughes doesn't have a chance. Mayava ends up with him again. And Pinkard was the guy who messed up the timing of the play. Charlie Weiss, uh, Charlie Weiss started at Notre Dame. Two outstanding years following Tyrone Willingham. Then it began, the bad stuff, and it has continued tonight. Three and nine, and say six and six. That is not good anywhere. It is particularly not good at Notre Dame. The rumors continue to circulate that the alumni are beating the drums to possibly buy out Charlie Weiss out of the remaining seven years on his contract. As Clawson goes down at the 20. And it was Kyle Moore from his defensive end spot. The range of the potential buyout goes anywhere from four and a half to fifteen million dollars. Some people would say it's a money issue. Others would say it's an issue of whether Notre Dame, which has always held itself itself in very high regard and deservedly so, is going to be like everybody else the way they were firing Tyrone Willingham after only three years, or are they going to be, go back to what is more like Notre Dame and give Charlie Weiss the five years that had, they had already given to, uh, to any other coach in Notre Dame history except for George O'Leary and that was a right. special circumstance would they do that and I think it, you know a game like this only enhances the drumbeat to say look let's come up with some money and buy out Charlie Weiss but there are a lot of reasons not to do that as well well I think the drum was really beating loudly because they lost at home to Syracuse yeah. in a game where they were leading 23 to 10 going into the fourth quarter I expected them to be more competitive tonight I mean I, I felt like even if they couldn't win the game which was gonna be a long shot they needed to take a step forward right. in the eyes of Notre Dame people I'm not sure they did that. Offensively, no. they've got nothing going. We've seen them play two times now. We've yet to see them score. We have their BC game. They got shut out. They They're don't being have shut a out first here. down tonight. They don't have a first down. I, I, defensively, you know, they've done a few things, but they're they're outmatched all the way around. Now, the argument on the other side about why they maybe shouldn't fire him is I, I had the good fortune of playing at Penn State for Joe Paterno, and one of the cornerstones of that program was the stability of the coaching staff. Sure. And right now, as I look at Notre Dame, I see it's a program that's had some instability issues over the last several years. Different coaches, different regimes, a lot like Alabama was until they found the right guy in Nick Saban. I don't know if Charlie Weiss is or isn't the right guy. I'm not sure who that right guy is, but if you don't know who that guy is and you don't have a pretty good idea that you can get him, you got to be careful just going out and firing a coach and then trying to hire another coach. You better have an idea what you want to do with that if you if you make a move. Let's take you back to the end of the Tyrone Willingham regime. The Notre Dame administration made a mistake because they thought they could get another coach. Yeah. The guy they wanted to replace Tyrone Willingham, but they made a mistake. They didn't. Yeah. Well, I think everybody knows they thought they were going to get Urban Meyer. They thought they'd have a good shot to get him. He evaluated that situation, thought he had a better situation to go to Florida, and went there. And uh, 
and then they were, you know, they were kind of stuck in that regard. The thing about Charlie Weiss, and I, I'm surprised that they've been so anemic on offense tonight. I do think that he has recruited fairly well. They've had a couple good recruiting classes. They've got some good-looking young players, but they're not taking steps forward here at the end of the season, and that's that's alarming. I mean, that's got to be concerning if you're a Notre Dame person, if you're a Notre, Notre Dame administrator. You at least want to see some signs that, that things are going in the right direction. And certainly those signs are not there tonight. Uh, and they haven't been in the earlier game that we saw in Notre Dame. And certainly they are better than a year ago, but Notre Dame was just dreadful a year ago. They were almost, by the very definition, of better they would have to be. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, Todd and I were lucky enough before the game to catch up with Notre Dame Athletic Director Jack Swarbrick. And you know, he was very forthcoming about a couple of issues. One that I thought was very important. There's so much talk this week about the buyout and the numbers in the buyout. And he said that the only factor that he will consider among a very a variety of issues is what is the best thing for the student athlete. And when we asked him about the buyout, he said it's not an academic factor. It's what is best for our student athletes. And he said, you know, tonight is a good measuring stick. How do we compare against a team that plays at this level? But he also pointed out they've had two pretty special recruiting classes. They're on the verge of another one. And that's one of the factors in consideration as well. You know, I think one of the things that's the most disappointing, and, and I'm sure there's nobody more disappointed than Charlie Weiss. Quite sure. honestly. He's a competitor. He thought they would be much better this year and that it would reflect in their record. You know, here they are, six and five, about to go six and six. The bottom line is their schedule this year was the 107th toughest schedule in the nation. This was the year for them to take a step forward record-wise after the dreadful year last year, and they've under they've underperformed. There's no question about it. Aldrich over the 45. And on the last play of the, the Notre Dame quarter, fans standing in chair. Yeah. <laughs> on the last play of the third quarter, Notre Dame gets its first first down of the ball game. Are you kidding? First, first down. End of the third quarter. Coliseum in Los Angeles. Notre Dame has just gotten its first first down as we start the fourth quarter. They are halfway to two, which is the worst they've ever had. That was in 1917 against Nebraska. And in 1917, I'm not even sure what you had to do to get the first down. Here's Reese Davis. All right, Reese. Notre Dame trying to cross midfield. It's second and six. Aldrich, the tailback. Clawson gives it to him on the draw. And Aldridge running hard, about a yard and a half shy of the first down marker at the USC 47-yard line. That's the first time they have crossed the USC 50. You know what's kind of scary, too, is that USC is playing without one of their best defensive players tonight. One of their captains, well, their seniors, Kevin Ellison, their starting strong safety, is out with a knee injury, had knee surgery. After uh, a game on November 3rd, they thought he was going to be back. He was cleared to practice this week, but couldn't make it all the way back. Third and short, first down and more. Aldrich. Well, this kid wanted to play, and he came off the bench running hard. Mays makes the tackle. Well, the only sign of life for this Notre Dame offense. Back-to-back -back first downs. Nice hard run by Aldridge. Good vision to see the cutback lane. And then again, you see the range of Taylor Mays, that big free safety roam in the middle of the defense. Aldridge, their leading rusher a year ago when he started five games, had 463 yards. Five carries for 44 on this drive. Aldridge again. This time, Mawaluga, the middle linebacker, was right there. And here's Reese. Did some good stuff tonight, aren't we? Whistles will blow this one dead. And Notre Dame will use a timeout with 12 34.
to go in the ball game. Charlie Weiss will talk to Jimmy Clausen. Two of the most storied programs in all of college football, Notre Dame and Southern California. They've been playing since 1926. Both started their programs before 1890. Each has won 11 national championships. Each has produced seven Heisman winners. And as we were at USC the other day walking through their trophy display area, just one Heisman after the other, that was pretty impressive. Clawson, blitz coming. Clawson hangs in the pocket, now under more pressure, and throws it incomplete. Well, at the beginning of this game, when Notre Dame came out for pregame warm-ups, when the whole squad came out, they were confronted by some USA, USC players, and everybody just started wolfing at each other, and it kept going and kept going, finally some pushing and shoving. Then a few punches were thrown, and officials stepped in, coaches stepped in, and were able to break it up, and if, you're, if you were listening for some of the quick-witted and sharp analysis that you've come to love here on ESPN, prime time we gave it to you we thought this was a good sign for Notre Dame yeah well we thought it was a good sign but we also said they don't give you any points for it I mean if they would have spotted Notre Dame about 24 points with that <laughs> it might have helped but, they'd uh, still be behind yeah they still had to come out and, and play the game and uh and I thought their defense early in the game was in the game and played okay offensively though it has just been a disaster this will be a 41-yard field goal try for Brandon Walker, and this season has been something of a disaster for him, although he has made 12 in his last 16. And got that one. 41-yard field goal, Notre Dame gets on the scoreboard. Todd still has not embraced a true playoff, as you know, but there's a plan that he likes. Coming up, we'll talk about the pros and the cons. A plus one. 31 to 3 USC over Notre Dame and we are in the fourth quarter at the LA Coliseum and Pete Carroll welcoming his defense after they lost the shutout yeah. on look, that field goal doesn't seem too upset does he well, he doesn't but look at his players and they're, they're kind of bummed out they wanted that shutout bad and now Pete says hey you know what we'll give him that Ronald Johnson nowhere to go and taken down at the 15-yard line. Here's Reese Davis. Oh. All right, Reese, thanks very much. We have 11.38 to go in this game. And it's 31-3 USC. They'll start this time from their own 16-yard line. And McKnight is in there at tailback. Pass complete up near the 25-yard line. Gain of about nine for Patrick Turner. And USC will get a first down there as Mark Tyler, the fourth running back the USC has used. And, of course, he's another parade All-American. Yeah, just a high school teammate of Jimmy Clausen. Yeah. Christian high school. Just one after the other. They just continue to roll him off the assembly line. Uh, you don't like playoffs, and I understand you have actually convinced me that it would not be a good idea. Uh, but there is a playoff, sort of, that you could yeah. embrace. Yeah, it's not a play. To me, the only thing that would ever eliminate all the controversy of some team getting left out or whatever would be a full-scale playoff whether it's 16 teams whatever it would be and I think my opinion is that would be bad for college football I think the bowl games are great for college football I think a full-scale playoff would ultimately be bad, be bad for college football but one model that I've heard talked about I think Mike Trangizi has talked about there's some people at ESPN that have talked about it is an unseeded plus one model where you would play your BCS games and add a fifth one so you have five BCS games you have your conference affiliation tie-ins like you used to you play all those games either on December 31st or January 1st and then one week later you play a championship game and so whatever method you use to to vote your teams or to, to rank the teams in the BCS you would use that same method after the bowl games okay. the beauty of it to me is 
that a team like USC that maybe can't go and be number one, number two, gets to play in a, in a major BCS bowl game, and then they get to be seen on equal footing because that, that last weekend where everybody's playing on December 31st or January right. 1st, it's all a good team against a good team or a great team against a great team. Just gives, instead of two teams having a chance to play for the right. championship, you have potentially 10 teams or at least eight teams that are in the mix going into that last week. So basically you're starting with the top 10 from whatever ranking system you use. Then when those games are over, you re-rank everybody. You've got one and two and go play for a championship. Somewhat like that. Doesn't have to be ranking the top 10. I mean, obviously you have conference champions that get tied in. That, that they get an automatic spot. You've got at-large at bursts. Those bowl games can pick matchups that favor, you know, the, the kind of matchups they want. But technically, you would probably have your top-ranked teams Notre playing Dame at the end of the year. Notre Dame is challenging to pull, pull the field, and it was a completion. Notre Dame has used a uh, challenge flag on that last completion. You know, and, and obviously, there's no perfect system. Uh, the, the thing I like about that idea, and at least considering that idea, I like the idea of making January 1st kind of a sacred day in college football again, where, where all those to games, be. the way it used to be, and that, that was a, one of the greatest memories I had as a kid growing up and watching college football. we we'll take a look at these replays again. And now they're trying to find out if Notre Dame was actually uh, able to take that ball away. It was Harrison Smith, the weak side linebacker, and Notre Dame not only uh, challenged you whether it was a completion or not, they want the interception. Great job of undercutting the route and then just taking the football, but it appears like he was out of bounds, out of bounds. When, he, when he did maintain control of the football. Excellent effort by Harrison Smith nonetheless. Ball hits the ground at all during that process, it's incomplete. You are correct. Charlie Weiss established himself as something of an offensive genius in the NFL. And as a quarterback guru, but it hasn't worked out that and way at Notre Dame. The play stands as called on the field. Notre Dame will be charged with a timeout. Also, they will not be able to challenge for the rest of the game. That probably is not going to be a matter of great import. But it was a good challenge as, as, uh, as it goes. It was very close to being a pick by Harrison Smith. Lawson has already thrown or Sanchez has already thrown two picks in this game and remember he came in he only had seven interceptions and 26 touchdown passes thirty one three and USC has dominated the game far more than that Notre Dame really has had only one drive didn't get a first down until the end of the third quarter. Still on his feet, fourth string tailback Mark Tyler, a redshirt freshman, 220 pounds, showing you he's got some running skill. Yeah, Mark Tyler just uh, happy to get some reps at this point, you know, when you got three guys ahead of you. Two sophomores and a junior. I mean, you'll take any bone they'll throw you. And right now, a, a good opportunity for Mark Tyler. Wendell Tyler, you might remember that name. He was a terrific running back for UCLA. This is his son, and there he goes again. Inside the 20 down to the 17-yard line. Now, how's that got to hurt if you're UCLA? Son of the star who played there, and he goes across town to play Gerard's rival. Well, he does a nice job following his senior left guard, Jeff Byers, up into the hole. Of course, we'll see UCLA and USC next week in that crosstown rivalry game. Byers again brought down this time, or really Tyler. Uh, funny story about Jeff Byers, he is going for his... Uh, 
number 53, the left guard. He is going for his graduate degree and was asked to address the team about the nation's current economic conditions. He's a very bright young man, and Pete Carroll likes people who are committed to what they do and very enthusiastic about it. Going for his business uh, degree in uh, his master's degree, he said he told the players right now the economy is not running any better than Washington State's football program. Ouch. Pretty cold for the end zone. Incomplete. Damian Williams was the intended receiver in the corner. He's had a huge game tonight. Although Washington State's program was operating a little more efficiently than the University of Washington, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It, then they win the Apple took Cup. So they won the Apple Core. It took yeah. them a, a, a couple of overtimes to do it. USC with the third and ten for Sanchez. Pump fake blitz coming. Sanchez over the middle. Touchdown. Patrick Turner on the post. And when you blitz as Notre Dame did and those guys are out there on an island, you can get carved up. If you don't get there, a guy like Sanchez and a receiver like Turner, they make it look easy. One thing USC in the last three years has had to guard against is the overconfidence. They are obviously so incredibly talented, yet they're 18, 19, and 20 year old yeah. kids. How do you keep them up 12 times in a row? The season's winding down, but the race for the Heisman is heating up. When we come back, Todd and his thoughts on what will decide. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Hampton Hotels. 38-3, the Trojans over the Fighting Irish. Beeler to kick to Golden Tate, who is waiting at the goal line. Beeler has put every one of these at least a yard in the end zone. Sign him right now. Reese Davis, what do you have? 38. 65, 38. Black. Aldridge gets another carry. A he, a carry. He has been the one bright spot for the Notre Dame offense tonight. Looks like some seniors are getting ready to come out. Some subs of this linebacking core. Looks like Cushing and. Malo, Malo Luga is going to come out. Mayava coming out. Though these three guys have been outstanding, not just tonight yeah. but all season. The, the heart and soul of this number one ranked USC defense, scoring defense, is their linebacking core. Three seniors, three outstanding players. Aldrich, the tailback, fumble. USC has it at the 23-yard line. Well, so much for the bright spot. Jarrell Casey knocked it loose. Michael Morgan was in on the recovery. Marshall Jones, watch him, number 27. Watch a smart play with a ball on the ground. Just flips it forward, it appeared. Jarrell Casey, the guy who knocked that out, is a really talented youngster, a true freshman out of Long Beach Poly High School. A big squatty guy in there at 6'1", 285 pounds, put his helmet right on the football, and uh, USC with the turnover. And a new quarterback, Mitch Mustaine, who fought his way up the depth chart to be number two. Mustaine, another one of those transfers from Springdale, Arkansas. 8-0 as a, uh, a freshman starter with Arkansas, but eventually lost his job when they dumped the spread and went back to the running game and transferred, and that was a, a nasty situation for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was kind of ugly at the time. A lot of uh, 
suggestions that maybe there was some misleading uh, on the part of, of Houston Nutt and who was going to play and what kind of offense they were going to have. We actually saw what the Gus Malzahn offense was supposed to be against USC. We were there to, to broadcast yeah. USC in Arkansas, and it was a pasting that the Trojans put on the on the Razorbacks, and uh, that offense was going to it was going to have a, a tough time early on. Uh, yeah. Working in the SEC. Multiple flags, flags. on the play. Flag. Holding. Holding on the offense, number 45. 45. Penalties decline. Holding. Holding on the offense, number 88. 10 yard penalty, second down. You know, Goodman and, I, and Miller both called for holding. Just going back to that whole situation, I mean, I can understand uh, a Mitch Mustaine wanting to, to throw and thinking he was going to go and do this. His high school coach was on the staff, Damian Williams, but I mean, let's be realistic also. Arkansas had Darren McFadden and Felix Jones and, a, and an excellent offensive line that was good run block good reason to run yeah real good reason to run and and all they did was win a bunch of ball games and go to the Cotton Bowl as well so uh, Tyler had his legs cut out from him uh, from underneath him Harrison Smith made the tackle and Holly Rowe has more Holly well, guys, after Mitch Mustaine was thinking about transferring, things kind of went south there at Arkansas. His mother reportedly had a meeting with athletic director Frank Broyles, and it was just a mess. But when we asked Coach Carroll yesterday how Mitch's family's been, he said they've been awesome, particularly his mom. She's been great. And when I asked Coach Sarkeesian about Mitch Mustaine, he said he's been fantastic. He doesn't say anything. He's quiet. He comes out. He works hard. They couldn't be more pleased with him. And he has worked his way up. Uh, it, it wasn't an easy transition for him. Throughout his high school career, as he throws complete to the sideline on this one, uh, to uh, Brandon Carswell. Throughout his high school career, he was in the shotgun. And then when he goes to Arkansas, he's in the shotgun. He really never learned how to play quarterback under center. And that's obviously what they do here at USC. That is a major transition. Well, and I think it's a major bonus for USC quarterbacks in terms of preparing them to go to the next level playing the NFL because you don't just play in offenses where you're in the shotgun all the time. You've got to be able to get under center, take disciplined three-step drops, five-step drops, and that's part of what they do here. Mustaine is going to be picked off as he underthrew this throw. And the interception for Gary Gray is second of the season as they go for it on fourth and 14. And Mustaine just sort of tried to fit that one in instead of let it go. Well, it, it was just a go route, and instead of throwing it outside, I mean, he's just looking at his man here, but instead of throwing the ball here, he's going to throw it back in here short, and Gary Gray is able to make the pick. His receiver goes at least even with the defender, but trying to throw the ball away from the safety, coming over to help, and underthrow, but not on the same page with the intended receiver. Lawson under pressure from the backup line and completes it for a gain of two or maybe three to Asaf Schwab. Well, we talked about the top of the show, the USC defense, the backbone of this team this year, and they have been everything that we expected them to be tonight. Led by seven seniors on that starting 11. They uh, hounded Jimmy Clausen. They completely shut down the Notre Dame running game. It wasn't until late in the third quarter that Notre Dame even made a first down. And, uh, they have been outstanding. Clausen got the pass in there, but it's dropped. Great throw, but Grimes couldn't hold it. One of the few times Clausen has had good protection and had a receiver open, and then the guy drops it for him. You have to feel for Clausen. I mean, the, each one of these games has got to seem like it takes all day to play. <laughs> They're just getting hammered. And this is what the USC defense has done. They have totally throttled Notre Dame. Their numbers for the season are brilliant. They're even better tonight. Blitz. Clawson throws underneath. Tate knocked out of bounds at the 40-yard line right at the sticks. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, these USC fans know exactly what's at stake. They just put up on the big scoreboard here the final from Oregon, Oregon State. Oregon was the upset that, in effect, gives USC the trip to the Rose Bowl if they can handle their business next week against UCLA. But, guys, the players looked up and saw it. 
they didn't celebrate much. They just kind of looked at each other like, okay, let's get back to business. But the fans, big ovation. All right, Holly Clawson got the first down up the Notre Dame 40. Hughes is the tailback now. Blitz coming. Clawson goes down. Never had a chance. Michael Morgan blew in there to get the sack. Here's Reese. Thanks, Reese. Four sacks here for the USC defense. Clawson's had to run for his life most of the night. Pressure coming again. Has it blocked in his face? Almost picked off. In fact, they nearly took it right out of his hands. Pressure up the middle from Malik Jackson, the 6'5", 230-pound freshman. Uh, USC with a lot of backups in the game, but they're not slowing down the game plan. They're not playing prevent defense. They're still going to go after Jimmy Clausen. If Notre Dame's going to throw, they're going to go after him. And uh, right now, the backups are playing for an opportunity to hold this Notre Dame offense under 100 yards for the football game. Right now, they're at 73 yards. 51 of that came on a drive where they got their only points in the ball yeah. game. Amazing. Clawson under pressure again. It's a screen. Hughes, the tailback. Fighting for extra yardage, but he'll be stopped Pass at the 41 yard line. Flag is down at the end of the play, and it might get a little testy from here on out. Marshall yeah, Jones is, on the just, just, just get him out of there. You know, if you're the Notre Dame coaches, get your guys back on your sideline. Hughes really feels he was done wrong over there by somebody. Those scrums, a lot of times you get offsetting penalties. Let's see. After the play, personal foul on the defense, number 87, 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Yeah, it was late at the end of the play. Watch uh, just at the end, just a jump over the pile, number 97. There's number 97, Mark Malik, Jackson. Malik Jackson, just kind of dove into a guy trying to get into the action. A true freshman out of Northridge, California, Birmingham High School. You know, one thing we haven't mentioned, Charlie Weiss says Notre Dame will go to a bowl at 6-6. Six and six. They will accept the bowl bid if it's after the 20th. They can't go early because of exams because you get so many more practices to prepare for those bowl games. It's a great time to develop your team, and obviously Notre Dame needs that time. Hughes will lose a couple. Well, the, is your Heisman list getting smaller? Well, it's still the same list. It's just I, I think there's two guys that are, well, I can't even say that. I mean, it, it's still the same list of the guys. You know, and I look at all of them. Sam Bradford is continuing to put up tremendous numbers. Graham Harrell, great numbers. But the last two guys, I think Colt McCoy and Tim Tebow are the guys that are, are really making the late run in my mm -hmm. mind. You know, and Colt McCoy, the, the thing about him is not only is he have great passing numbers. He is the leading rusher on the Texas football team. I mean, that's amazing because it's not a quarterback run offense. Right. He's doing it on extra plays, scrambles, keeps, you know, those kind of things. And Tim Tebow, uh, similar kind of thing. And yeah, we've got more going on. And yeah, Malik Jackson is right in the middle of the same thing. Malik likes to mix it up a little bit, and this time with Sam Young and Robert Hughes. Hughes 33. And some guys might get to take a seat here in a second. Malik's got to understand the difference between making a tackle and picking yeah. up yellow flags every time he gets near a ball carry. After the play. Personal foul. Number 97, number 33, both are ejected for fighting. That's what I thought. So Hughes has to sit down. Jackson has to sit down. Well, obviously, a lot of frustration 
from the Notre Dame standpoint, I mean, here's where it is right here. Actually, there's four people. Look like they're doing a little uh, dance to start off with. But, uh, There's just no need for that, no call for that at any point in the game, and, uh, particularly right now. Clawson gives off on the delay to Aldridge, and they'll be within about three yards of the first down with a clock run. But the only thing negative, you know, it depends on how you interpret it about this USC team. I mean, I love their defense. I think their offense is, is maybe more conservative than they've been, but they've got great talent. Their mm -hmm. offensive line, not as good as maybe they've had in some past years. But penalties, I mean, they're a very heavily penalized football yes. team. But you know what? So are the Florida Gators. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're, they're one of the worst penalized teams in the SEC. And uh, sometimes that aggressiveness, you don't want to tone down too much. Some people are able, able to overcome those penalties. Clawson throwing on fourth down. Nobody went deep and Clawson threw for the end zone. Notre Dame will turn it over on downs with 34 seconds to go. So the Irish regular season is going to come to an end at 6-6 six and six after 3-9 and nine a year ago. A Notre, Notre Dame team has ever lost 15 games in two years. And well under 100 yards of total offense. That, that's just... Yes, they're young, but uh, this kind of result just isn't acceptable. About the 2009 season. All right, Reese, we only have 34 seconds to go here. And we remind you of Sunday NFL Countdown brought to you by IBM tomorrow at 11 a.m. and Sports Center at 7 p.m. tomorrow night to get you updated on everything NFL. And USC wins the 80th renewal of the greatest intersectional rivalry in all of college football, although it would be tough to tell from tonight's score, 38-3, and it was not as close as the score might indicate it. Charlie Weiss and Pete Carroll will meet at midfield to talk about this ball game. Another tough one to swallow for Notre Dame fans and USC with just another glimpse of how good they really are and just how incredibly talented they are and what a dynasty that Pete Carroll has rebuilt on the West Coast and I think that's you mentioned dynasty before there's no other word to describe what he has no it's incredible and and their players expect it to be that way I mean, they, they don't know anything different than the culture that they've built yeah. here of competition yeah. and success and playing for championships all right let's check in with Holly Rowe Holly Brian Cushing, uh, he's getting some high fives from guys. Brian, first of all, you came out on the field tonight. You guys are mixing it up with Notre Dame. What were the emotions like to start this game, your final at the Coliseum? It was great emotions. You know, like you said, it was the last one coming out in this uh, awesome stadium. You know, great record here, and, and we want to prove this is our house. How difficult did you make things for Notre Dame's offense tonight? I think so. You know, they were struggling. I think they didn't have a, a first down until, like, the last play in the third quarter. Really trying to get after them, you know, scattered them all week. Actually, two weeks they had off, and just, you know, just absolutely just ready to go. You guys came off the field after you allowed that uh, field goal, and it looks like you'd lost the game. You were so dejected. Why was that? Absolutely. You know, that's just the attitude we have. We don't want to give anyone anything. You know, we, we, they got to earn it, and uh, we understand that. Uh, we don't think we shouldn't have gave it to them, but we did. You know, we got the win, which is most, most important. I think you have a fan back here. He's playing with your hair. He's been your cohort on the field for a long time. Ray, what's it like for you and Brian to finally play side by side for the last time? You know, it feels good. It feels great. You know, um, just to come out here and play against, uh, you know, a good rivalry team, you know, winning the way we did and executing the plays that we did, you know, it just felt great. You know, just, just happy to be home, just happy to be in front of our crowd. And, you know, if you see tears coming down my eyes, you know, I apologize, but, you know, it's just, uh, just the whole effect of everything. Did you hear about the Oregon score? You know what's happening there. You know, I'm glad to come back and, uh, you know, play in the Rose Bowl for the fourth straight year. You know, I'm, I'm happy just, you know, just to be home and, you know, that's what it is. All right, that's what it is, guys. Back to you. Of course, he is ignoring the fact that they have to beat UCLA next week, but uh, 
We'll be there to see how that works out. The final score, USC 38, Notre Dame 3. Coming up next on ESPN, stay tuned for SportsCenter. And for a wrap-up of this game, catch us on ESPN News in a few. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For our leader, Bo Garrett and Scott Johnson down in the truck. For Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, everybody, and good night from Los Angeles.